Greetings class, my name is Dan Millard and today we'll be discussing the relevance of Western civilization as it pertains to our course on the development of Western freedoms. The study of Western civilization is vital to understanding a comprehensive study of world history. It is essential to understanding how we got to where we are today, a key element of reflecting on our past and, as Dr. Kerry Roberts alluded to in his introductory video concerning why a course on Western freedoms, it is directly relevant to ongoing debates and challenges on liberty and freedom today. Historically, we've seen the idea of Western civilization referred to in various forms, with many scholars varying in their stances on what constitutes Western civilization or its proper role in the study of world history. In his article, What is Western Civilization?, scholar Lawrence Birkin wrestles with the notion of what constitutes Western civilization, as well as to whether a limited or expanded concept of the West best serves this discussion. Shedding more light on this matter, Robert Royal wrote in his essay, Who Put the West in Western Civilization, that any comprehensive account of the West would have to look at ancient Greece and Rome, the contributions of Judaism and Christianity, the Age of Discovery, the Renaissance, the Reformation, Counter-Reformation, the Enlightenment, and even anti-Enlightenment modern and postmodern forms. While a historical survey of these movements lends itself to a wide range of significant contributions to human civilization, none amount to the incredible development of Western thought or ideology, which constitutes a series of ideas and values emphasizing things like humanism, ethics, equality before the law, self-governance, and ultimately the idea of human freedom. It is this value of human freedom that another scholar, Alexander Rosenthal Pubal, recognizes as the key element that makes Western civilization unique among world cultures in his essay, Reflections on Ancient and Modern Freedom. In the present day, the idea of Western civilization has in many ways become a cultural foundation, encompassing a, a wide array of values and ideas built around a synonymous understanding of liberty and freedom. These ideals have conceived a Western philosophy holding certain beliefs for what an ideal society should then look like. Alluding to this, Daniel Hannon wrote in his book, Inventing Freedom, that, quote, Western peoples are unified together under a certain realm of perspective and thinking. It is precisely this line of thinking that has given way to associating Western civilization with the development of democratic ideals and practices, the spread of science and knowledge and technology, and ultimately the defense of liberty worldwide, as also alluded to in another book, The Uniqueness of Western Civilization. As a result, in addition to becoming a core set of values for many of the West, this ideology has then become a lens for those of the West to view the surrounding world. It has become a, a standard for principles that politics and government should uphold. It has been a blueprint for developing countries to model and, and even at times a, a spirit which some leaders have wished to quell. Throughout modern history, this sense of Western value has been at the forefront of major events and, and conflicts. We've seen ideological lines drawn and fought over during the world wars rehashed during the Cold War, challenged during the war, war on Terror, and even ridiculed by members of the West itself in recent years concerning some of the harsh events that led to Western civilization as we know it today. Perhaps ever more, a proper study on Western civilization is relevant and merited, one that acknowledges the shortcomings, difficulties, and at times even atrocities that occurred in the experiment that was the developing Western culture, while also recognizing the incredible contributions that Western civilization has ultimately made towards human liberty, equality, justice, and overall prosperity. In closing, Rosenthal Pubal helps bring this discussion to the contemporary age by looking at variations of freedom and liberty from the ancient to the modern era pertaining to things like liberalist political philosophy today. Ultimately, for me, this begs pertinent questions such as how is freedom consistently achieved, valued, and upheld over time? Perhaps this begs more valuable reflection on questions like has a sense of what freedom means been lost over time? Has the idea itself been misconstrued? Have those who inherited Western culture, uh, despite all their best efforts to fight for the cause of freedom and democracy, failed to impart the virtue required to sustain true liberty? Thus, in a world currently stifled with conflicting ideologies, political dissent, and a lot of societal tension, one might acknowledge that discourse concerning an accurate understanding of what fully encapsulates Western civilization is not only relevant, but actually needed. Thank you.